There's something in there called the Nike effect. And the Nike effect was essentially Nike tried to sell their brand on Amazon themselves. Nike was a seller on Amazon four or five years ago about, and they weren't capturing the buy box. There were other sellers who had been selling Nike for longer on Amazon who were capturing more of the buy box than Nike. So they reached out to Amazon because they're big dogs and they know the big dogs at Amazon and said, hey, Amazon, you need to do something, make some changes because we're not capturing enough of the buy box. And what did Amazon tell Nike? Amazon told them that the buy box is algorithmic and the algorithm is what has brought Amazon to the place where they are today. It's what's best for the customer and so it's what's best for Amazon. So essentially, Amazon shut them down. If that's not a selling point, that a brand like Nike, who has inexperience with selling on Amazon, but has vast experience with marketing and selling everywhere everywhere else globally, couldn't do it on Amazon, but you can and you tell that story to the brand right there. It's just such a phenomenal selling point. And we'll make sure to provide you that story of Nike effect because we love to use it all the times when we're talking to brands. There's nine different factors to the Amazon buy box. Mobile shopping is growing rapidly, even more so this year than the year before. I think last year was two thirds of all smartphone users have online shopping apps on their phone. Over 150 million Amazon users last year were purchased through the Amazon app at one time or another. That is huge because when it comes to the buy box, there's really there's really only one seller on that smartphone and it's whoever the buy box seller is. The font is like a size one font to see any other sellers. You'd have to click that tiny little font and then see what other sellers are selling on it. If anyone's looking at that second page, it's only other sellers who even know about that that will be looking at that. No one else is looking at that. So essentially, whoever has the buy box is getting the sale. This is if there's other listings that have other sellers on it, but you're gonna be joining and helping them to capitalize and recapture that buy box and then recapture their market share on those listings so they could rebrand themselves correctly. Now we're gonna go into, of course, transparency codes and using different UPCs and different strategies to recreate these listings and remove unauthorized sellers and help with their own distribution chain. So that's gonna be huge. So how are you gonna sell yourself? Through branding, through advertising, through something we already talked about, which is A plus content, brand registry. Advertising is going to be huge. And the way that advertising is going to work is you're going to discuss PPC campaigns. Uh, you're going to talk about advertisement placement, where the ad is going to be placed. You're going to talk about the full brand advertising, advertising the full brand. And of course, how much this advertising plays into the buy box nowadays. I mean, the only time Amazon makes money off of advertising is when that seller has the buy box. So if I'm selling my product for $20, but I have a PPC campaign on that ASIN and another seller is selling it for $20, but they don't have a PPC campaign running on that ASIN, Who's Amazon gonna give it to if I'm paying 50 cents per click? Every time I sell it, Amazon has potentially a chance to make 50 cents more every time that I have the buy box if the customer had clicked on my advertisement versus the other guy who's selling it at the same price point who's not advertising. If you don't think advertising plays into the buy box algorithm, even though Amazon says it doesn't, it does. It absolutely does. So branding, which we talked about, which was uniformity through A plus content, through title, through the keywords, through better images, through video content on their listings. This is how you're gonna help them brand themselves on Amazon. By asking those questions that we previously just brought up, you get a better vision of theirs and you're able to take that vision and bring it into their listings. Then you're gonna talk about the A plus content. You're gonna talk about advertising. Afterwards, you're going to talk about fulfillment. You're going to talk about multi-packs, variety packs, why a, a consumer is going to be more 
willing to purchase a three pack of something that has like that keto that was three different flavors. So they get a little sample of all of the brand's product line. And in the future, they'll purchase the one that they like the most, or maybe they'll be purchasing all three because they love it. But a consumer is definitely going to want to try their variety. And it gives the consumer an opportunity to explore more of the brand's product line. And it's a way to be unique because in e-commerce, they're going to have an opportunity to have essentially a different packaging, a different product than they would in the brick and mortar. The brick and mortar is not going to have the chocolate chip with the snickerdoodle with the cookie dough like the high keto did on Amazon. So this gives the brand an opportunity to not only get sales in their brick and mortar, but then for the consumer to explore online, find these variety packs and multi packs and purchase them as well. Huge. And you're going to be handling all the fulfillment. And with handling the fulfillment, you'll tell them you'll handle returns. You'll tell them you'll handle refunds. You'll tell them you'll handle customer service. You'll tell them you'll handle reviews. You'll tell them you'll handle feedback. You're essentially handling everything e-commerce. You want the brand to focus on the brand, growing great products like they're already doing. That's what you want them to focus on. And you are going to focus on everything else to do with e-commerce.